Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. I'm now going through question number nine from the January 2022 Pure Mathematics P2 International A level exam. And this question is um, looks like it's about integration and area under curves and such. So it's a curve with equation y equals x minus x squared. So the curve C has equation y equals x minus x squared. Okay, it's shown in figure 2, as, as is the line with the equation y equals mx. This is y equals mx, where m is a constant and m is between 0 and 1. The line and the curve intersect at the origin O and at the point P. Find in terms of m the coordinates of the point P. So we've got to find the coordinates of this point P, which is where the line and the curve intersect. Right, I need to find the x and y coordinates of this point, p. All right, so now, how do you find the point where a line and curve intersect, or where two functions intersect? Well, you have to use simultaneous equations. All right, so here we have y equals x minus x squared, and y equals mx. All right, so this is equation 1 and equation 2. Now what we can do when we're dealing with simultaneous equations is you can substitute one of the equations into the other. So for example, y equals mx. Okay, so therefore I can replace the m, the, the y in the first equation with mx. So it's like substituting equation 2 into equation 1. So instead of y, I'm going to write mx. So mx equals x minus x squared. That's how I like to think about Substitution. Some people say, oh, equate the two equations. Well, that works in this case where they're both equal to the same thing. They're both equal to y, so you can say they're equal to each other. But if they're written in another way, for example, if this was y squared equals, then you have to be a bit more careful about it before you can do that. So thinking about it in terms of substitution is always better. You can replace the y in one of the equations with what y equals in the other, and you have now got an equation without the y. You've eliminated the y. Okay, so that's one way of dealing with such a question. So now we have what looks like a quadratic equation. I can um, make it say equals zero, so I can use the zero product property. In this case, I'll have x squared. I'll have a minus or plus mx minus x equals zero. So now I can take out the common factor, which is x. Then I'll have x plus m minus one equals zero so now i have two solutions either x equals zero or x plus m minus one equals zero if this is one of the solutions that means x equals you go to add one and take away m from both sides x equals one minus m all right so that's those are the two um coordinates the x coordinates of where they intersect now one of them is at the origin which is the one that we don't want because can see that what it is and we we're asked to find what p p is so we need to find the coordinates of p so p has an x coordinate of 1 minus m and now we have to find the y coordinate of p well we can use either of these two equations the second one of course looks more simple to use so we can say y is equal to m times 1 minus m that's the y coordinate so therefore we can say the coordinates of p are 1 minus m for the x coordinate and m times 1 minus m for the y coordinate and that is your answer for part a we found the coordinates of the point p where the two lines or the two functions intersect okay that's part a now we're going to go on to part b it says the region r1 shown shaded in figure 2 is bounded by c and l so this r1 here is bounded by the curve and the line We've got to show that the area R1 is given by this equation. We also need to know the, the coordinates of P, which is 1 minus M, and M times 1 minus M. Okay, just making sure of that. That's what we just found. That's right. Okay, so now we, we probably need that for this question. So it says, show that the area of R1, which is the area between the curve and the line, is given by this expression. We know the equation of the curve. We know the equation of the line. Now, when you want to find the area enclosed by two functions, enclosed by the two functions, 
we integrate between the points where they intersect. Let's call it A and B for now. Okay, between the limits A and B. Okay, the points where they intersect. Okay, um, and it's always better to take the function that is above the other one in that region where they intersect or the region you want to find the area. So here the curve is above the line. So the equation of the curve minus the equation of the line integrate that with respect to x and that's going to give you your region the area so r1 the area of r1 is going to be given by this okay so let me just move all this along a bit so i can say the area of r1 the area of r1 is given by this okay so now let's put everything in place so that means that's going to be equal to the limits are zero and where they intersect is going to be 1 minus m, the x coordinate, 1 minus m. That's the x coordinate where they intersect. Then the equation of the curve is x minus x squared. The equation of the line is mx, so minus mx. I want to integrate that with respect to x. Now I can see that my answer is going to be in terms of 1 minus m. Like So what I'm going to do is, I think to make life easier, before I actually integrate, I can see I'm going to have a 1 minus m. If I, these are two like terms. Okay, I can take out the common factor basically from this. This is x term, this is an x term. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to write this as, just to make it clear to you, this is x minus mx minus x squared. We've just rewritten this first. This is between 0 and 1 minus m. And this can actually become, this is like a common factor of x here. So this, if you think about it, is like, 1 minus m times x, that's going to give me x minus mx. And then I've got my minus x squared, integrate that with respect to x. So you can see that I've got something which now looks kind of similar to this form. I think that will make my life easier than manipulating afterwards. So now what I'm going to do is I can now I'm ready to integrate. I'm going to integrate this. I could have integrated from here, but I want to leave in this term this coefficient of x like this because I see that that's going to help me most probably in the way that the, the what I have to show looks like. So now I'm going to integrate. So now I'm going to write my square brackets. If I integrate 1 minus m uh, times x, 1 minus m is just a constant, so that stays as it is. You add 1 to the power of x and you divide by the new power. So that's going to be x squared over 2 minus x cubed, add 1 to the power of x, divided by the new power, and you have your limits of 1 minus m and 0. So now I'm going to substitute the values in. So you're going to have 1 minus m times x, replace it with 1 minus m, so 1 minus m squared over 2. So it looks like it's going to work out just ni nicely now. A minus, sorry, this is 1 minus m cubed over Three. So this is 1 minus m times 1 minus m squared. Looks like a 3 there. Okay, which will become 1 minus m cubed. Okay, so it works out fine. 1 minus m times 1 minus m squared is 1 minus m cubed. Okay, over 2 minus 1 minus m all cubed over um, 3. Okay. Now I can combine these into one fraction. Um, I can see that I can make this over 6. I can also make this over 6. Same, same denominator. I have to, um, this has to be multiplied by 3. So that also is by 3. So that's 3 times 1 minus m cubed. And multiplied by 2 to make this 6. So 2 times 1 minus m cubed. So 3 minus 2 is 1. So I'm left with 1, 1 minus m cubed over 6. And that's what we had to show. So that's the area of R1. So there we have the answer to part B. Done in a nice, simple way by spotting this form, okay, and writing this in that kind of way before we integrate. I could have done it by just integrating straight away from here, but I think I'll have to do a bit of algebraic manipulation to end up with this. This, I think, makes life way easier. Okay, so that's the question number B. Um, number 9, part B. Now for 9, part C. Now it says, the region R2, also shown in figure 2, is bounded by the th by C, the x-axis, and the line L. 
given that the area of R1 is equal to the area of R2, find the exact value of M. So again, we know the point P is 1 minus M and M times 1 minus M. Those are the coordinates of the point P. Now, what I'm going to do here is, I mean, what we could do here, if you look at the different strategies, is find the area of R2. Um, that will be a bit complicated, okay, because you've got this triangular section, okay, which you can find easily because you know what the base and the height is. The base is the x coordinate of P, the height is the y coordinate of P. And then add to it the area of this little section here, okay, between this value of P and where this curve hits the x-axis, which you can find easily, all right? However, that's going to give you an answer in terms of M. The answer here will be in terms of M. So you'll probably just end up getting the same expression again, okay, because these two areas are equal. So that won't really help us. That won't really help us. I don't think that will help us. What we've got to do is think a bit differently. Think, okay, if the area of R1 is equal to the area of R2, that means the area of R1 plus R2 is equal to twice the area of R1. Because why R1 and R2 is the same. Okay, and we know the area of R1 is equal to 1 minus m cubed over 6. Therefore, the area, therefore, the area of R1 plus R2 is equal to 2 times 1 minus m cubed over 6, which is 1 minus m cubed over 3. Okay, that's the area of R1 plus R2. We can also work out the area of R1 plus R2 by the fact that it's the area bounded by the curve and the x-axis. So the area of R1 plus R2 is going to be the integral between 0 and this point here, where 1 minus, well, sorry, where x minus x squared equals 0. Okay, this is this point here. That's going to be x times 1 minus x equals 0. So x equals 0. That's this point here, of course. And x equals 1. So that's the point x equals 1. Between 0 and 1 of this curve, x minus x squared with respect to x. That area is the area of R1 and R2. And that's equal to the area under this curve. So we can say that this area that I'm going to find is equal to that. And hopefully that will help us find what m is. So let's just now work out what this is. This is going to be, when you integrate this, you have x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 3, 1 and 0. That's going to give me 1, one half minus 1 third minus, and if I put 0 into those, it's going to give me 0. So it's a half minus a third, which gives us, that gives us 3 over 6 minus 2 over 6, which is 1 over 6. So I know that the area of R1 plus R2 is equal to 1 over 6. So therefore, we can say 1 minus m cubed over 3, which is R1 plus R2, is equal to 1 over 6. Now we can try to solve this and find what m is. I have an equation with m unknown, so we're going to multiply both sides by 3. So we have 1 minus m cubed is equal to a half, 3 times 1 over 6. And then we're going to take the cube root of both sides. So it's 1 minus m equals the cube root of a half. Okay, so we can say a 1 minus the cube root of a half is equal to m. And they want us to find the exact value of m. So I'm not going to find the cube root of a half. It's not something which is rational. So it's 1 minus the cube root of 1 over 2. You can leave your answer like that. That's perfectly fine. That's the exact value of m. Okay, so that's the exact value of m. And that will give us the answer then. All right, so that's uh, question 9, part C. And that concludes this question, um, question 9 from this paper. So other questions from this paper can be found on the playlist that will appear somewhere in this area. Other questions from, I guess, integration of PT, P2 sorry, can be found in the in playlist that should appear in this area. And you can click on this link to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon.